All right, let's do it. Okay, do it. I'm going to say the thing. I don't want you to freak out. I'm just going to say, thanks for joining us on our comic book coffee break. I'm Nick Gunning. I'm Eric Mickles. Why were you afraid I was going to th- freak out? Because last year when we did this and I said it, you were like, oh, 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 are you, oh, are you right. reading something? What's happening? Are you I'm recording? Re- I don't know why I made you like Robin Williams and Mork and Mindy yeah, there, sure. but <laughs> you were, oh, oh, oh my, oh, oh, hey, hey, oh, we're recording. All right, all right, we're podcasting. Too close? Hey. Oh, too far. Boom mic, boom mic, I need a boom mic. <laughs> Get this man a boom mic! <laughs> 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 oh, stupid. It's starting stupid. Hey, I, I am get drink- no respect or boom I, like a no, 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 that's Rodney Dangerfield. You switched right, to Rodney he, Dangerfield. No, Robert, that was Robin Williams doing a Rodney Dangerfield. As, oh, okay. I can't believe it. I'm losing to a rug. <laughs> right. Like that yeah, you got it. From Aladdin. Okay. You gotta be right. a straight shooter. No, that's Nicholson. That's yeah, that Nicholson, was him in Aladdin. Though. Oh, you're doing well. all of them. You're doing all yeah. of them. I love in number three, it's so meta when he does it's Robin Williams doing Genie doing Mrs. Doubtfire. Mm. It's a it's a beautiful moment. It would have been really mean if it had been Robin Williams as the genie doing a Homer Simpson impression. True. Yeah, that wouldn't have been great. Hey, you know what? I am I am drinking coffee. I'm drinking Yubin coffee, and I'm drinking it out of my Perfect Strangers mug. See how it says Wrap 9192? Yeah. This was a crew mug from the 9192 season of uh, Perfect Strangers. Nice. From the show Perfect Strangers. From the show Perfect Strangers. Do you remember uh, Do you remember COVID, uh, COVID-19? Yes. Well, I, I had it. Uh, in 2020 uh-huh. and i just laid in bed isolated and i watched a bunch of perfect strangers and so to oh. celebrate being sprung i bought this perfect strangers wrap mug uh on ebay and uh I, i've been using it. i don't know I, they probably were like nobody will ever use this piece of television history but i'm using it like a mug and i'm never looking back yeah look at you mm-hmm. all right eric let's talk comic books what are some of your favorites from 2022 you said that you hadn't read that much this year but i don't think that's true because i see your goodreads just like going and going and going yeah i feel like i haven't read that much not uh compared to past years and previous lives that i've Mm -hmm. lived Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'll tell you what i found when i was going through trying to pick favorites it was a real stretch trying to find dc comics favorites this was a year of marvel for me oh yeah so i don't know i feel like i know i feel like marvel in some ways the apps, the Marvel app is just so much more reliable for me. Mm. How do you how do you feel about that? Well, I primarily read on a browser most of the time. Oh. And the DC app is a lot more complete yeah. than yeah. the Marvel app. There is no Marvel web app. Like there's right. no library, there's no my list, there's no continue reading. Whereas it's the full experience with the DC yeah. Universe Infinite app. Um but yeah, maybe I have I have this terrible uh nook that i got a few years ago instead of an ipad i've regretted it ever since <laughs> just this, it has no battery life and mm. i can't tell if the problem is the dc app or yeah that thing so it's it's not great with the marvel app either mm-hmm. but um mm-hmm. i mean i like them both i in a perfect world i'd have like a brand new ipad that has both and i'd be going back and forth comparing just them. boom 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 pew, yeah. Pew, pew. yeah i have to download everything otherwise yeah. it's just like It'll take mm-hmm. me three minutes to turn a page, and, and I don't need that. But, uh, yeah, I, I feel like I did read a decent amount of stuff. Do you want to talk movies and TV first, or do you want to jump right into the comic books? I don't have any movies and TV. No, but I mean, I wanted to talk about, like, what the best comic book interpretation oh, boy. of this year is. Because it's a weird one. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I watched any TV. Did you not watch Moon Knight? I didn't watch Moon Knight. Oh, you, you know what? I did watch She-Hulk. Okay, you I'm watched good. She-Hulk. Did you watch Ms. Marvel? I didn't watch Ms. Marvel. I didn't watch Ms. Marvel wow. on night. Look at you. Okay. Well, it looked like they were changing a lot of stuff about both characters. Yeah, it's true. So. It's true. I mean, I probably liked Moonlight the least. And Ms. Marvel, I felt like it it has that thing where it's like, all right, by the end of the series, it's going to be exactly what you want it to be. And the whole first season is sort of like getting closer and closer to being a Ms. Marvel show. I'm yeah. over that. I'm so tired of uh, season-long pilots. Yes, I know. And that's, yeah, that's that one really struggled there because the cast was great uh, and there's a lot of pieces were there, but it's like I got so impatient by the end of it when she's finally like doing stuff. I'm like, here mm-hmm. we go. And that's the end. But... I put on uh, Tokyo Vice because I was okay. like, I like the people involved in this. I yeah. like this whole vibe. And like, not even like five minutes went by. I just turned it off. I'm like, I can't commit to an hour long, 10 episodes of an hour long thing. I just, 
No, thank you. Just put yeah. this, just call, just make a movie called Tokyo Vice, and I'll watch it in two hours. Make it yeah. two and a half hours. I won't complain. Yeah, I get that. What about? Um, I mean, I would, I would go She Hulk. She Hulk would be my favorite. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think if I watched anything else. Did DC put out Peacemaker? Was uh, was good stuff. Yeah, I mean Superman and Lois. I, I have very few complaints about Superman and Lois. I was really happy with this this year's season. There's a bunch of stuff. I mean, I guess She-Hulk is the thing I had the best time with and yeah. surprised me with how faithful it was to a lot of stuff. Yeah. So. Did you get into any of the uh, the Disney Plus stuff? I mean, did you watch like Andor or Willow or Obi-Wan or anything like no. that? I mean, we watched Obi-Wan. You were like, whatever about Obi-Wan. Yeah, I, I thought, yeah, I'm not going to get into it. Okay. Uh, but I definitely was not happy with Kenobi. So. Yeah. Also, they made for some reason. I don't know if it's the filming technique or if it's lower budget or what. But like, you McGregor looks small in that whole. Like, he just seemed really small. Isn't he kind of small? I feel like he's yeah, kind of a short but guy. I guess in the movies and stuff, he just he has like something about him that this yeah. one it just made him seem like a tiny little puppet mm. man. Okay. So. Wow. All right. I liked Obi Wan. I, I like recognized the faults in it and wish things had been better, but. His performance, I think, was really good, and you know, I, I liked, I liked a lot of the stuff with Leia. Not everything, but oh, Flea was in it, huh? Yeah, Flea was in it. A so little, uh, I had that little, little red surprise. hot chili pepper. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about universal love. It's unlimited love. The, oh, okay. the album was called Unlimited Love. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So it's a little confusing that you said. More universal. like universally speaking. Eh, hold on. Universal Soldier? No, that's you know, yeah. That's, yeah, that's something what it was. different. That's something different. You know what I want to see but haven't uh, uh-huh. switching to movies here is Samaritan with Sylvester Stallone. Okay, have you seen anything about that? I guess I've seen enough that I don't want to. Watch oh, you don't want to watch it? Yeah. I mean, it probably won't be good, but I kind of uh, like. I don't know. I, I like exploring superheroes and the concept of superheroes outside of like the big two. Yeah. So I feel like Stallone still got it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay. I haven't. What's the last? I can't remember the last. Creed probably two is probably the yeah. last. Yeah, I'm it's, excited it's, about Creed three. Yeah, no, I did not watch any of those movies. Okay, there was another one though that all that Owen Wilson was in didn't watch. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah, can't that looked remember. like Spy Kids or something. That didn't yeah, really sure seem did. like the legit. Yeah. yeah. So what do we have this year? Then we have the Batman, Black Adam, Thor: Love and Thunder, Doctor Strange. Oh, Doctor Strange. That's right. Wakanda Forever. Um, Super Pets. Super Pets. And was Morbius this year? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, Morbius was, was this okay. year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't see Morbius. I never saw it. Did you? I, yeah, I did. Okay. I, not worth it? <laughs> no, it's no. not good. Okay. Well, I, I know it's is, not good. I guess I was hoping it would be fun somehow. Morbius is not the worst way to spend, like, a Sunday afternoon. We saw it in a Dolby screen at, like, 1 p.m. on a Sunday. And we were out at 3 p.m. and we just moved on with our lives. But yeah, so it's not like it was awful. Yeah. But like it remind it did remind me of when I used to see bad movies like as a teenager, where it's like, <laughs> you know, it's bad. But like, what else are you going to do? It's not right, even two o'clock right. on a Sunday. But yeah, it's it's takes a lot of stuff from a bunch of different superhero movies. And adds Jared Leto. <laughs> yeah, there's it, and yeah, it doesn't take any of the good stuff and make it good so there's stuff like it's borrowing stuff from like 2003's daredevil movie huh and yeah i don't know wow okay i got i got in like it's taking beats from batman begins and stuff it's just and none of it is good so i don't know it's just it's not a good vampire story it's not a good superhero thing it's just a waste of time. I it's guess become a, a running joke in my house. Like when my wife and I are being like, oh, what should we do tonight? Maybe we should watch a movie. I'll be like, is, is, is tonight the night we watch Morbius? And she's like, no. Yeah, so love one, it. Of, one of these days, I'm just going to have to put it on <laughs> and sit through it. I did watch Super Pets. My uh, son and my brother and I went to see that in theaters. Uh-huh. I thought it was a pretty decent time. John Krasinski was a terrible Superman. But other than that, pretty, believe pretty that. pleasant. Yeah. You know. I haven't played the game. We keep meaning to play the game. My son wants to play it. Right. So what what would you give it to then? What what's your favorite superhero movie of 2022? Oh boy. I don't know. I mean, I guess it's between Thor and Black Adam because both are kind of just I'm going to give it to Thor because okay. I found Black Adam even though it was 2 hours to be a stretch 
for those oh, two hours. Okay. okay. Like I felt like the last fifteen minutes were unneeded. Yeah. Where yeah. we're like, oh, now there's an actual vid. I'm like, we don't need. I'm I fine. know. They, I agree. It's just it's that Black Adam was just so loud and so like nonstop. I was just kind of exhausted. And when that when another villain showed up, I'm like, I'm I'm really good, guys. Yeah. We're good to cut this at 145. But don't you think Black Adam was also kind of good? Yeah, it was a good time, but yeah. I just I was just ready to be done before the movie was. Okay. Yeah, I get uh, that. But this was another one that we watched no expectations, you know, and it really mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I really thought the, the the way the Justice Society was presented, I really liked all this hot just Hawkman. I, I don't know. I was expecting to feel nothing for this movie and I was kind of ready for Black Adam too. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, that's uh that's a, <laughs> not gonna happen. But I have quibbles with like I wish Hawkman like they keep presenting him as cool and tough, but he never really has like a good victory moment where yeah. it's like this is why you have a hawk man yeah he's just kind of there because he can take a punch from black adam and survive which yeah. should be a big deal but he never really has like a boo yeah i'm yeah I'm hawk man kind of hawk man is a tough sell in live action i think no yeah. matter how you do it and i feel like this was pretty successful the issue know, is that they're mainly just there to fight black adam and since they can't right. beat black adam then yeah. Hawkman can't have like they needed something else that Hawkman can just be like, oh sorry, I just destroyed eighty robots before Black Adam got here. That's yeah. why you have a Hawkman. Yeah, my wife thought Adam Smasher was a little too Deadpooly for her taste. The mask was a hundred percent Deadpool. Yeah, the mask technology. definitely. Which yeah. I mean, that is that is the the Adam Smasher mask, but still love yeah. the Henry Winkler cameo as the original Adam Smasher. Yeah. <laughs> like okay, sure, um, it's Henry Winkler. But I'll give it to Thor because Thor yeah. was just a really breezy. Good time. Yeah, it was. Which had a lot of fun moments. Yep. I mean, there are things I would also... Ch- like, I wish the uh, gore stuff would was taken more seriously. And I oh, yeah. kind of wish they would have pulled back on, like, Thor's funny to the point where he's just a jerk. Yeah. Stuff. Uh, like, the bit where he's talking to a bunch of kids who are might die. He's like, oh, yeah. he might die. I don't know. Who, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, okay. Uh, we've reached a point where he's not being likable. But I feel like it's kind of a natural, like from the original to through yeah. Ragnarok to here. I mean, it kind of makes sense trajectory wise. But I hear that. I love Thor quite a bit. I feel like maybe you I love have to Thor, give it... Love and Thunder. Yes, <laughs> just a lot of love. I think maybe I have to give it to the Batman. Oh, jeez, you didn't like the Batman? There's always one. <laughs> Sorry, no, I'm kidding. Everybody loved Kendra, my wife, put uh, Batman on her top movies of the year. So there you go. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like I, I even now I struggle to be like what appealed to me so much about that movie because it's darker than I typically like. Yeah. Uh, both in content and just the color saturation was I couldn't see a thing. But I felt like it was a good representation of Batman, and I liked sort of the real world. It was almost like too real by the end. Like the Riddler's plan is like, oh, that's a viable option. Let's yeah. let's never talk about that again. Right. But <laughs> I watched it in theaters, and then I watched it a while later because my wife hadn't seen it, so we watched it together. And I still was, I still felt pretty good about it. So, yeah, I, I saw know. it twice in theaters, uh, once in IMAX, which was, just, which was a good time. And then I get, the second time I was like, this is three hours. Long. Yeah, I, I couldn't have sat through it twice in theaters, no. but yeah, the Batman just has so many elements from not even just like past Batman stuff, but like the very previous Batman stuff yeah. that is kind of like, well, if I want to watch Batman, I'm going to pick. One, but my wife loves it, and she loves Robert Pattinson. So oh. I'm hoping the the sequel kind of turns me around on it. It's just hard to go from a 90 minute uh, Let There Be Carnage to a three hour yeah Batman <laughs> film. It's true. And also, we we've it's reached true. a point where they're sometimes they're trying to take characters such as Batman so seriously that when they do something that is superhero or comic booky, it just like there's the scene where he's paragliding out of the uh, police. Yeah. And he hits something and then he just like rolls and tumbles and then he just gets up and walks. That's but all it's you gotta like, do. It's just so it just it's just doesn't land. If it's supposed to be funny, I don't know. Because it's been everything's been taken so seriously, I just assume like somebody taking that much damage should be dead. Yeah. So then when you're like, look at him tumble and fall and he just walks away, I'm like, okay, so we're serious but not real. I yeah. guess. I don't know. Yeah. Anywho. Yeah. No, I think it's a fair criticism. Hey, do All you right. know, have you ever heard the phrase, uh, you're as sneaky as a penguin? No, I... What I, about, I've never... uh, you're as backstabby as a penguin? No, I don't 
That's oh, okay. Familiar. I just thought oh. we could just put penguin in all in well-known anything. things, like you know, yeah. a rat with wings, work. a penguin. Right. right. <laughs> of course. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I still laugh when I think about Kevin Smith calling the Batman Returns Penguin a sea pig. Yeah. That makes me laugh every time. I laugh right. when I remember that they knew that it was dumb to call a penguin a rat with wings, so they gave the penguin the line, what are you, dumb? <laughs> I don't know. It's just like, I know I'm a bat, but I'm pretty sure someone would call a penguin a rat with wings. A One, rat with wings. Penguins are famously rodent-like. Right, of course. They also multiply in many numbers like right. rats. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. March of the rats. That's what I yeah, want to say. March of the law. Yeah. Okay, let's move into some comic books. Let's talk. Let's talk Marvel first. What do you got? What are some oh, of your let's favorites? Talk Marvel first. Yeah, let's just talk favorites, which means I'm going to take X Men X of Swords off the list because I'm only going to talk about things I liked this year. Whoa! <laughs> oh. uh, this is the year I finished Immortal Hulk. I also finished Immortal Hulk. We read it and together. I read it with you, so Ooh. we both finished Immortal Hulk at the same time. That sure got drippy and gross by the end. Yeah, it started gross and stayed gross, and it never really, like, justified the grossness. No, it didn't. It didn't. But overall, I have, like, good feelings towards the run. Yeah. It's it's definitely something that was stronger in pieces than a whole. Yeah. No, and I don't think it nailed the landing, which is something you want to do with a 10-volume, like, a, was it 50 issues? It was, a, yeah, yeah, I think it was. 50 issues. It's a 50-issue run that, like, that, I feel like you want to land yeah, the end you gotta have and that locked in to some people it probably did but to me it was just kind of like so we're just this was the point yeah just to be like why am i hulk i, I, don't, I don't know why is anything i don't think they really like they they tease early on the the concept of his immortality and the whole the green door situation i don't think that ever got as deep as you needed it to be to really be an exploration of anything yeah and it it became such a gross out book for me by the end i was just ready to be done but i do appreciate that it was it was it's it was like a self-contained thing. It was like this is a story we're gonna tell. And I feel like that's rare that comics get to finish. You know what I mean? Yeah. That it's kind of like, let's go in this direction and then be like, man, people don't like it. Let's reboot it. Yeah. Uh... I did read the one volume after that where he's like a spaceship, and I was like, I don't know what this is, but I liked it. Yeah, I was gonna talk about uh that as well. Smash okay, or not. Hit it. Yeah. That's it, just by Johnny. It was just a different change of pace, uh, but it's still kind of Seems like it's kind of carrying on from the Immortal Hulk stuff. Yeah. Basically, Banner's turned Hulk into a mech. Yeah. I mean, yep. I've only read the first volume, but it was enough that I'll keep reading uh, Smashtronaut yeah. stuff. Yeah, I'm ready for more. So, uh, one that I was excited for this year that I read and really liked was Hulk versus Thor, Banner of War. And like, look, these characters have beat the crap out of each other so many times. Like, I don't, mm -hmm. you're not going to find anything new in this book, but it was like, like Top Gun Maverick, it was just like, yeah. This is what it is. Enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Here you go. And cool. I did. So that was Donny Cates and Martin Kokolo, but I thought that was really good. Mm -hmm. I read some okay. of that on the app, and then I caught up, and I went to a legit comic book store and bought single issues so I could Look finish it. I know. Yeah. I know. Honoring your heritage. That's right. On the Hulk front, um, I finally like sat Ooh, down and read through. Is Hulk front through. where the Hulks are fighting in the Banners of War? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, yeah. We need more men on the Hulk front. Yeah, I can write to you from the Hulk front. <laughs> uh, I read the the '80s She Hulk run the John, that started by John Byrne, and then he shows up here and there. Um, one of Marvel's longest running female centric uh, heroes. Breaking the fourth wall. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be easier to find if uh, Goodreads wasn't doing this stupid thing where they take name everything by the subtitles now. Yeah. Well, the this this run, like Burns' initial stuff is collected. Some of it's collected in Howard the Duck, and then Burns' later stuff is collected. But like everything in between is just sort of like good mm -hmm. luck, you know? So I had a bunch of single issues from when I was a kid, and I tracked the rest down. And I'd read I read those a bunch of those when they came out forever ago, but I'd never really sat down and just like burned through it. So ha, John burned, burned through it. Burned. Yeah, nice try. So I did, and I really liked it. I felt like yeah. that. Um, I think the sensibilities don't like. I think it's trying to not be sexist, and in doing that, it is occasionally sexist. You know, <laughs> maybe often sexist. But I, I mean, I appreciate what they're going for, and it, it's an enjoyable series. We also read the uh, the classic She Hulk, Savage She Hulk, together. Yeah, that was a thing. Uh, yeah. I definitely preferred uh, the breaking the fourth wall, John Byrne stuff. Yeah. Uh, the problem with the if you get the epic collection, 
I find, is that it only has some of the burn stuff, and it is a drop off. Yeah, it is quality because like the people staying there try to replicate the burn humor and fourth wall breaking and it doesn't land and then as it goes on it just tries to be a funny book without the fourth wall stuff Mm -hmm. and then that doesn't work and then it just kind of plays it straight yeah so you it's definitely not like a i don't know it's not the the last couple issues don't read like the first couple issues in that yeah for sure for oh. sure. And it, it goes in and out with quality yeah. throughout that whole run. But, you yeah. know, still pretty cool. And also, even when John Byrne is being funny, like all his art in that is gorgeous. Yeah, it's true. So, it's true. I could have She-Hulk's hair. I wouldn't be wor- <laughs> I wouldn't be doing this podcast with you. I'd be. No, you wouldn't. On a You'd be doing model thing. I shampoo don't know. commercials. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Boy. Yeah. Just me I've... with She-Hulk's hair. If you want She-Hulk's hair by Eric. <laughs> yeah. I, I finished a bunch of runs. This this is a thing I was trying to do this year, like finish things that I started forever ago. And so with that, I read in its entirety, Astonishing X-Men. Oh, geez. How did you feel about Astonishing X-Men? I was never a fan of the Weed and Arrow stuff. Mm-hmm. And then I wasn't much of a fan of much that happened in it either. Yeah. I'm yeah. Trying to, I can't even remember what was well, very specific about it. I remember... Is that the series that started crossing over with the uh, Age of Apocalypse characters? The oh, Night, I think, yeah. Nightcrawler well, I think, yeah, and we got, Iceman show up? We got a little bit of that. Okay. The, thing, the thing about that run is I feel like, I mean, first of all, Josh Whedon is a monster, so let's just, uh, let's just get that out there. But the yeah. Whedon era at least has an identity, and then after that, it's like each set of issues is just kind of like whatever, its own thing. It, it never is cohesive again. But there's a volume in there, Volume 9, Exalted, by Greg Pak and Mike McCone. It's a really good Cyclops story. Okay. And you just get so few Cyclops stories where he's not just being a tool or being awful or whatever. And this was just like, a, oh, yeah, this is why I liked Cyclops in the 90s. You know, this is this is a cool representation of him. We've got some time travel stuff going on. I just felt like that was a standout uh, in the Astonishing X-Men run. I remember they were trying to make it kind of after Whedon left. It was like, now we get like premier writers because Warren Ellis was the one who took yep. over. Yep. His run was just so blah. It was. With the it Forge really stuff. And I don't no. know. It wasn't. Yeah, that series went from like their like flagship book to just like, we're printing it because we've got the title Astonishing X-Men on copyright or something. Right. <laughs> yep. yep. We have subscribers to this. Keep it rolling. Yeah. Keep it rolling. Yeah. Do you have other Marvel things that cracked your list here? I don't. Oh, okay. Well, then yeah. let me tell you a few of mine. One I think you'd like is Fantastic Four Full Circle by Alex mm-hmm. Ross. It's just a real, I mean, of course, it, the art is gorgeous. It looks great. The colors are vibrant and it mm-hmm. just feels special i don't know it's it's kind of an oversized hardcover the story's cool um so the story and the art combined just give you sort of a nostalgic cool version of the fantastic four and just as a complete package it works really well so that was one of my favorites of the year definitely my favorite visually no Mm. like hands down my favorite visually Uh, and then i completed two other marvel series one is one that you've been trying to get me to read for like a decade now and i finally read all of superior spider-man by dan slot and you know what it's great. Yeah. It was so good. You said it in 2013. <laughs> and darn Gosh. it. You're still right. Yeah. Uh, it's great. I don't know. I, did, I was just like, I don't want to read a Dr. Octopus book. And you were like, mm-hmm. don't be stupid. Just read it. <laughs> and then I did. Was that five volumes? It wasn't That long. seems right. That yeah. seems right. Yeah. I read okay. it on the app, so it's hard to keep track. But Yeah. It had a satisfying end. Uh, it did. I'm, Man, I remember when that started or when the Peter Parker stuff ended, like the death of Peter Parker. Yeah. That led to Superior Spider-Man. I remember people being like, oh, you're ruining it. You've killed Peter's dumb and stuff. Like comics are static and never change. But yeah, it was just really fun time. I don't know. It's hard to describe why it's so good. It's just Doc Ock is just such a... Uh, like a jerk. Self-destruct- yeah, he's a <laughs> yeah. jerk. He's self-destructive, but yeah. like he's not wholly without some redeeming qualities in yeah. that. So yeah, it's good. Like you never get the sense that Doc Ock isn't a villain right. in that story. Right. But you still end up rooting for him. Yeah, and they give him plausible reasons to do things heroic, yeah. whether it's just keeping up appearances with the Avengers or some twisted sense of like morality comes into play a little bit there where he's like, mm-hmm. look, I I have to do this. This is like mm-hmm. part of it. 
Uh, but it works really well. And I'm just uh, shocked that it, this... I feel like this is the kind of thing where it'd be like, oh, this is a paradigm changing shift in Spider-Man. And then it's like maybe three issues, yeah, you know? And here, yeah, like you said, we had a full, like full volume, a full like Doc Ock Spider-Man run. Yeah. And I'd read Worldwide, Spider-Man Worldwide, which kind of picks mm-hmm. up after this. And that does a good job too of picking up the pieces. And it's not just like a reset. It's not just like, yeah. oh, Peter's back, whatever. Like he really has to deal with both the pros and the cons of what Doc Ock has done because- yeah. Doc Ock's finished his doctorate, you know, like he's got him all this stuff. <laughs> he's like a really yeah. improved Peter's life, which I think is cool. Yeah. Finally, yeah. for Marvel, I want to mention Gwenpool. Have you read any Gwenpool? I haven't. So this, uh, this I think, was five volumes as well. And, you know, Gwenpool is one of those. She sprung up based on the popularity of like an alternate Deadpool cover. And so they made this character. And it just works really well. Like, mm-hmm her gimmick of being from our world and falling into the Marvel universe with all the knowledge of the Marvel universe and how she can sort of manipulate the comic book format and stuff, I think is very cool and works mm-hmm. really well. I don't know that it's one that you could have a hundred issues of or something, but like mm-hmm. for the issues that they had, I was pretty interested. Is this it's, one you'd ever pick up? Yeah. It's Quentin choir in that a lot. Kid Omega. Oh, Oh yeah. 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 I like him. Okay. From the Morrison days. Ah, okay. The Jim Morrison days. Just Ooh. kidding. I mean the Grant Morrison days. <laughs> yeah, Jim Morrison cameos. has never written X-Men. Maybe he has. I don't say it. Yeah, maybe he was in one of his journals. You never know. Yeah. Paul McCartney wrote that uh, Magneto Titanium Man song. That's so. true. Yeah, we never got a Doors song about the X-Men, but it could have been. Maybe you did. Maybe you're just not looking deep enough into the lyrics. You know what? One of the trailers, I think the second trailer for Dark Phoenix used this is the end oh so there okay. you go there you go yeah there's your yeah. connection mm-hmm. so i i read a bunch that were not marvel and dc and i'm just gonna rapid fire hit them Please. on you okay. do, do you have any of these i've got some dc and i've got some non-dc yeah okay here's what i got i read all of heart stoppers by alice oseman okay. i read most of that on the webtoon app and it was it was a good time you and every other teenager in america i know it was, a, it was a slow burn romance they were so popular at the library we couldn't keep Did them on the shelf it? No, I didn't watch it. Because it's a Netflix show? It is a Netflix show. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I read Heartstopper and I read Loveless, also by Alice Osman. And, the, okay. and Loveless is a prose novel, but it's connected. Mm-hmm. Something about it. Just slow burn romance. I don't know. It was, it was funny. It was fun. Mm-hmm. I had a good time with it. I read, this is not funny or fun, and I did not have a good time with it. But I read The Handmaid's Tale adaptation by Renee Nalt. Oh, yeah. I read those too. The uh, January 6th. Uh papers is that right <laughs> no 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 <laughs> the road first way turnover listen i'll t- i'll tell you what i'm just this trying one we every year every year i work at a library you know every year we we do a band books club book every every year and handmaid's tale was one that we put in the schedule back in january and so we did it in september and it seemed like it was like a political choice and the book club got a little heated but all that to say, this is a really clever adaptation. Like the art and the words oh, yeah. go really well together. And it was, uh, it was very good. Yeah. Another one I read was run by John Lewis and Andrew Aiden. You've read March, right? Mm-hmm. This sort of like picks up after March ends. And what I liked about this was that it covers an area of an era of civil rights history that I feel like is not super well known or well documented, you know, like all the, the, the Martin Luther King era, you know, is the one that, gets all the movie adaptations and all the play. And this was really like sort of a niche bit of history that I just really wasn't aware of. So I appreciated that quite a bit. Mm. Uh, I read one called Ewoks shadow of Endor by Zach Gialongo. This Uh was uh, that I read for the Sandorian life. But what was so cool about it is that it took elements of return of the Jedi, the TV movies and the cartoon and melded them all together very successfully. So I was impressed Mm. by that. What do you have? That's uh, that's other. Let's see. Megaloid. I think okay. it's pronounced. All right. Uh, the God Network. It's by Vincent Perot. Uh, I think it's French. Hmm. Anyway, it's this oversized hardcover set in this post-apocalyptic world with dinosaurs. It's not Cadillacs and dinosaurs, but oh. it's scratched that itch. Okay. So it's one of those things. I, I never like when a story is like, it's this world, but with dinosaurs. But then the dinosaurs are just treated like regular animals. Right. So it's just yeah. like, yeah, they're just, you just see dinosaurs, but they don't like... The story is not different because there are dinosaurs in it. Okay. Whereas this one, the dinosaurs were very important. Oh, all so right. I had a good time. Nice. 
Let's see, what else? Uh, so I haven't read a ton of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comics. Oh, okay. uh, I got some of the black and white ones, and I've read volume I one. I read of the your hardcover. copies of those. Yeah, I've got the volume one, or I read the volume one of the, uh, is it IDW? Is yeah. That, okay, so I read that. But they put out this five, This uh, it was five issues. They put out this volume called The Last Ronin. And uh, oh, yeah. it's that in the future after all the other turtles are are have been killed uh, and yeah it's yeah. just one lone ninja turtle left and he's there to avenge his brothers and there's a bit of it kind of reminded me of uh i guess ronin by frank miller frank miller yeah and in terms of just like the future and everything um but it's actually got a lot of heart in it uh and uh when you find out which turtle is left there is a poignancy oh oh so that's like a mystery. You don't know which one. Yeah, you don't know which turtle it is oh. because uh, the, the, it's a different mask. It's not a colored right, mask. Right, right. Uh, so it's not until one of the characters calls the turtle by name. You're like, oh, okay. Wow. Okay, I need to read this. And it's just it's just a good time. And it is kind of like the last Ninja Turtle story, if you want it to be. Okay. So uh, I don't want I that. Mean, they're, they're still putting out turtle stuff, so that's okay. fine. But it's just, I really liked it. And this is a, I mean, Old Man Logan came out for ever ago i was in like college when that came out yeah but right now it seems to be a real hot market to do all these like there was that uh that last green ranger story that came yeah. out a few years ago yeah the last ronin was the turtle one they did the last um slayer an alternate reality buffy the vampire slayer where right. she's the last and they're just kind of really doing this old man yeah. old woman stuff we're all getting now. old that's it i mean i guess we're all just Maybe uh, nerds are finally asking for some fi- finality in space. Yeah, but I guess so. That's not I guess really so. Blood. Uh, I read the Magic Order Volume Two by Mark Miller and St- Stuart Immonen. I don't know what to say about this comic other than uh, <laughs> like they're dumb, but I, I just. I don't know. Like I go online and I see people being like Mark Miller. It's dumb but fun. But I'm always just like, but it's it is fun. Yeah, I don't know. It's just he's just <laughs> That's so an important element. Yeah, he he's just he's wearing his. I just think this is cool vibes on my on his sleeves when he yeah. really writes. Yeah, he's just you know he doesn't and I don't know. He's he always clicks with me on some level. I've read some of his like standalone stuff that I'm like, well, that wasn't good. But like mm-hmm. the Magic Order is big enough and uh, funny enough. I guess that's it. They're just okay. like big. I mean, they're. I guess he's the Michael Bay of comics in some ways, <laughs> but I would say huh. he's better at dialogue than just trying to think how he'd take that. But yeah, I don't okay. know. Maybe well, yeah. but it's kind of like, uh, you know, I was talking to Kendra that it's funny that the back to the future movies have like the time machine is a car, but yeah. there's very few like car chases. In True. The DeLorean. Yeah. You have yeah. that opening. One just the, the first one. one. Yeah. Yeah. But then he does, Mark Miller does Chrononauts, and they're like, not only is it a car chase in their time machine, but it's a car chase, like, through time. So they're like, you know, bouncing between good. locations. It's like, yeah, you, why did I that happen? I have to read back? all of these things. Okay. I guess that was the Back to the Future the Ride. Yeah. They're like, yeah, let's do That's a true. car yep. chase with a... Yep. So, uh, what else? The Me You Love in the Dark by Scotty Young. It's a, oh. just a single volume uh, standalone like sp- yeah. uh, spooky thing about a woman uh, who moves into a haunted house and uh, starts building a relationship with the ghost. But okay. believe it or not, sometimes building a romantic relationship with a ghost can be kind of toxic. I do believe it. So I it's my guess. It's it's spooky. It's uh, the art's really good. It's um, it's a fun time. Uh, okay. So I like it. Scotty Young does those. Doesn't he do those little marvels? Oh, could be. Could I, be. I might be wrong. I know he does the um, the Strange Academy books and uh, okay. did a did that Rocket Raccoon comic a while ago. Okay. Um. You, what else? What? Oh, uh, I just made me think of the the Marvel Infinite comics you know they're they're little like up and mm. down webtoon style things yeah. i love the spider bot one that's just my go-to i want more there's 12 mm. issues and there hasn't been more it still says it's ongoing so i'm hoping mm. another season's gonna drop but i love that my wife and i read um it's jeff. jeff yeah yeah <laughs> yep. so. yeah jeff shows up in uh gwenpool a little bit 
Yeah, see, it's got two characters I already like. So boom, right there, in. you got it. Hey, I read a Star Trek comic. Yeah. I read a Star Trek comic called Manifest Destiny. Uh huh. It's by Mike Johnson and Angel Hernandez. It's a it's a one off. It's a standalone. It's not part of the ongoing series or anything like that. Uh, and it was just a good time. It just felt like uh, an episode of a of a show. Like if there was a show with the Chris Pine cast, it would have been Manifest Destiny, and I would have been like, "What a great season!" So <laughs> good stuff. Uh, this is the year I picked up Reckless. Okay. By Ed Brubaker. All right. Sean Phillips. And I love it. I read like the first three volumes in a row. And then uh, I had to wait because the fourth volume was on hold. And then I had to wait because the fifth volume wasn't out. Jeez. So, yeah, it's just great. It's about this guy. He fixes problems. I okay. Guess. He, like Quantum Leap? He lives in California. People come to him. Not He's not really like a private eye so much. at Like he, he'll do that. But... He's kind of who you go to when, I don't know, somebody's stealing your groceries. Oh. Your grandmother's car was stolen and the police aren't, you know. Okay, okay. He's willing to, or even if just like, hey, this person keeps calling me, he'll go and like break a finger or something. Okay. Have you ever read any of Lawrence Block's um, Matthew Scudder novels? They made that Liam Neeson movie, Walk Among the Tombstones. That's a Matt Scudder story. So I think this one is going in vibe. Uh, I put the first book on my to read list, Travis McGee. Oh, yeah, is, that's that's John D. McDonald. But yeah, OK, I think that's the one that Ed Brubaker has mentioned was kind of being a reference that okay. and um, the Richard Stark stories. OK, so uh, yeah, it's pulpy. It's it's fun. It's fun. set in uh, it starts in. I think it's the eighties, but you get some seventies. Oh, I started stuff. in the eighties. Yeah, you did. Oh uh, yeah. The five volumes have all been good. So the support okay. cast is fun. Cool. Um, yeah. What was I the title on that one again? It's reckless. Reckless. Okay. So I, I made a display. I, like I made a display at the library for people who like Reacher for this oh, as well. Okay. So, Cause Reacher is the guy who just walks around, right? He's got yeah. no home. He's so, got a toothbrush yeah. and a change of underwear and that's about it. And then it. he fixes problems whatever town he goes into. Yeah, like yeah, reckless. reckless. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I thought right. I thought. You know what? I feel bad because I've only watched like two episodes of that Quantum Leap reboot. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if I'm not watching it, they basically oh, yeah. made it just for me and I'm yeah. not watching it. I feel like I'm letting them down. Uh-huh. What if he quantum leapt into Star Trek? Whew. That'd be crazy. <laughs> yeah. That'd be pretty crazy. And he only quantum leap into the same time? And he can only quantum leap within his own lifetime. Okay. So theorizing that one could time travel within his own lifetime, Dr. Sam Beckett stepped into the quantum accelerator and vanished. Okay. Come on, Eric. Yeah. Here's what I read on DC. Do you got a lot of DC on your list? I got some DC. Okay. I think my favorite DC of the year is probably Flash Year One by Mm -hmm. Josh Williamson and Howard Porter. This was, um, Josh Williamson did a big long run on Flash towards the end here, and it ended with a volume called Finish Line, which was also a pretty satisfying ending. But year one, I felt like I don't think Flash has really gotten that kind of treatment ever. I mean, I'm sure there's origin stories, but this was like, you know, Flash year one. Yeah. Uh, And it felt it felt modern and true to the character. And I just had a good time with it. I I wish that there was like a volume two or something because I I really liked it quite a bit. Okay. Yeah, I have. Is this this isn't new? This is new. It's new. I mean, you know, it's the last couple of years new. All right. Well, then I have not read that either. Okay. Yeah, that I find sometimes the year ones can be hit and miss. Like definitely, e- even in the Batman universe. But yeah, I'll have yeah. To check that out. I like a good year one. Okay. What do you got, DC wise? Uh, in order of having read, I guess I read okay. Far Sector at the beginning of the year by oh, M.K. Yeah. Jemison. Sure, my wife read that and loved it. Yeah, it's uh, it's good. It's twelve issues. Yeah, that might be. A couple no, you're of right. Issues too long. Oh. Um. <laughs> But this was the Young Animals imprint, whatever that yeah. is or was. I can't even remember. I, I remember when they going. announced it. Yeah, that was like Gerard Way was leading the way with that, with like Doom Patrol and uh, yeah, uh, Kit Carson and all that. So Cape Carson, I don't know. There was a bunch of those. I know um, Joe, the Green Lantern in this, has been used elsewhere since this is. Yeah. Ended. Yeah, my wife um, read those too. I haven't either, but she shows okay. up. Yeah. So uh, she's part of like the DC universe proper. It just kind of, it's so, she's set so far away from Earth and the other lanterns. In a far sector. It, it might as well be like a Vertigo title oh, okay. or an Elseworld tale 
but because they've brought her into the universe proper, uh, you know, yeah. it's more than that. But if you just want to read this and never read anything else about the character of the Green Lanterns, it's just a very like weird sci-fi tale. Okay. So, it, yeah, outside of the fact that it, she is a Green Lantern, it could be a non DC title. So there you go. Okay. I read a lot of the. Um, speaking of young animal, they had another <laughs> imprint. Baby that animal came to around. you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> la 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 la. Uh, <laughs> they had one wow. called Wonder Comics, and it was like Naomi and Young Justice and mm-hmm. uh, Wonder Twins and mm-hmm. um, Amethyst and Ginny Hack, so a bunch of stuff in there. It didn't really amount to much, and not really much was paid off. Like Naomi Volume One, I liked and was interested in, but there was such a long time before there was any follow up, and the show fizzled, obviously. But within that, and the only Bendis DC stuff that I've enjoyed at all mm-hmm. would be Young Justice. I feel like that played to his strengths. I mean, it read like a like a 90s team book, you know, and that, you know, he did a good job with that. And typically I don't like his team stuff, but I thought Young Justice was really good. His Superman was like, it was a hard, it was a hard uphill battle for me to get through that. And by the end of it, I was just like, go yeah. away. Welcome. So not a fan of that, but I I did like Young Justice. And I liked Wonder Twins Activate by Mark Russell and Stephanie Byrne. That was such a funny, breezy read. I had a uh, great time with that. Your feelings on Bendis on Superman were my feelings on him with the X-Men, but I feel like he was on X-Men a lot longer than he was on Superman. I, I don't know. Both Superman and action comics. I really, like, I was reading the Superman titles really, like, I was up to date on it. And that Bendis stuff came, and I read the first volume or two, and then was like, I, I want to uh, say like a year, two years. I don't know before I could pick up the next one. And finally I was like, I just mm-hmm. have to get through this. Um, so I finally finished that. And the new era, like once Bendis leaves, Superman kind of fractures where he goes mm-hmm. off to war yeah. world and John Kent, his son kind of takes over as like the Superman of earth. I'm right okay. at that fork right now. I've read yeah, like the read first the volume and I really, Yeah, I really liked the setup Mm -hmm. for the War World stuff, and I'm excited to get into that. So one run that I was not, I was really cool on at the beginning was uh, James Tinian the Fourth. No, Dark Knight or his? No, just his run on the Batman title. Yeah, he was there. That's five volumes, so I think his last issue was one seventeen. Okay, it didn't click with me because you have. I feel like the first two volumes are the. Dark Designs, and then Joker War, and that stuff didn't land. But then Ghost Stories, Cowardly Lot, and Fear State were happening, and I don't know which one it was. It might have been the Cowardly Lot, which is the fourth one, when I realized, like, he's turning Gotham into, like, a very, like, cyberpunk city. And, like, as soon as that, like, clicked with me, I was in. And I started kind of appreciate... I don't know how many of the characters he introduced are going to be forever characters uh like clown killer whatever okay. his new name is um the ghost character he introduced uh the girl with green hair whose name i can't remember uh which probably isn't a strong sign i would take any of those people if it meant we never had to see professor pig again i don't think he's in this yeah these uh five volumes but Good. the the characters Good. he introduced like i kind of actually grew to be interested in and uh, huh. by the fifth one, Fear State, I was just really once I once I clocked in, like this is Batman Cyberpunk. I was like, okay, let's do this. Yeah, you love some. Cyberpunk. And it was, I guess, at this point, I know that comics can't offer me the same kind of like, I don't know what it is. The idea that we're like moving towards something, like when I was reading X Men, I don't know when yeah. it clicked off for me that like, oh, the X Men are heading somewhere. Probably after No More Mutants, that that was kind of like, oh, okay, it's this stuff is very random, actually. Um, so now I just yeah. kind of yeah. go for like what stories have weight, what feel like they okay the sure. stakes matter, yeah. even though nothing matters in comics. And I felt like yeah. Fear State, like, all right, yeah, there's weight to this. And uh, it's the art's really good. And uh, I don't know. Part of me feels like I could own this run. Oh, OK. It's, I mean, it's only five volumes. I did yeah, like do like the Joker War, but maybe a reread would help because I know where the run is going. And it True. takes away from Joker. Once you know the aftermath. Yeah. So, yeah, I liked how it ended. It was a, a big, exciting thing. That's cool. Joshua Williamson took over for Tinian with the Batman titles. Oh, okay. He did this. It's 
for volume six uh before it was the series got renumbered like the graphics got renumbered because um mariko tamaki takes over oh okay so he wrote a one and done story as batman volume six abyss um that i really liked the art continued to be really good and it's a really fun uh club of heroes batman inc story okay i don't normally like the whole batman incorporated stuff and i haven't read like a great club of heroes since uh the black love but okay this was this was a good time so okay uh, he wrote he wrote the flash stuff i liked oh okay Mm -hmm. yeah 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 he wrote year one and stuff like that yeah yeah, it's definitely worth picking up. I know sometimes, you know, a run ends and then you get that like volume or two volumes like, oh, we just got to keep writing until the next writer comes in. But this yeah. was uh, <laughs> this was enjoyable. Well, that's the smart way to do it. Just have it be its own thing, yeah. you know, rather than just like because there's lots of times where you just feel like, OK, we're spinning wheels here until we get to the next. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe start like making the Batman movies based on Batman comics from like the past 25 years. Yeah. I don't know. Instead of the past, you know, instead of the 80s, I guess. Right. Yeah. Uh, There's definitely stuff to mind there. I liked uh, Kelly Sue DeConnick's Aquaman run. Okay. She had one called Manta vs. Machine Mm -hmm. that I really liked. And just like you're saying, like, there's no, like, Aquaman is always going to end the same way. Like, you're always going to get back to, oh, he and Mira are together Mm -hmm. and he's the king of Atlantis again until they break up and he's not the king of Atlantis. And it's just like a constant cycle. And I feel like Kelly Sue DeConnick's run on this embrace that was kind of like, look, we all know, we all know where this is headed, but she still managed to make the journey interesting. And by the time I don't feel like this is a spoiler, but by the time you sort of have Mira and everybody in place again, it felt like, yeah, this was an interesting retelling of this story. And it felt like satisfying. It wasn't like, wow, such new ground has been broken, but like, being able to tell a familiar story in a, an engaging way, Mm -hmm. I think is a real skill. And so I felt like this run really kind of nailed that. Yeah. So, you know, I also finished the earth one. That was, that was another thing that I started forever ago. I read Superman earth one volume three, Mm -hmm. and that was kind of like the last chunk of the earth one titles that I hadn't read. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it was great. I've liked all the JMS uh, Superman, all three volumes, I think are really strong. And I love that Grant Morrison, wonder woman volume one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Together this year, we read, well, we finished Immortal Hulk, we read all of Starman, we read all of uh, Savage She-Hulk, and we've just started Peter David Supergirl. Yeah. How are you feeling about Peter David Supergirl? Uh, we'll see. I know. The first volume does not is not super promising. It's not like, yeah, what's going to happen? It's mm-hmm. kind of like, oh, okay. Okay. Batman the Detective by Tom Taylor and Andy, oh, okay. Andy Kerbert. Um, Black Label? No. Um, oh, Okay. When was this? The trade came out in 2022, in February 2022. Okay. It feels very, I don't know, not like I, I guess on my Goodreads review, I called it classic. And I guess I mean that it feels like an old school standalone Batman story out of continuity, kind of. Yeah, yeah. It's it's another one of those like Batman's villain is another Batman kind of thing, which uh-huh. is really uh-huh. over. Um, <laughs> but they have a decent motivation. And okay. uh, Andy Kerbert's art is good. I don't know. It's it's six issues. It's Batman going to London, uh, fighting this uh, London Londinium. It's Londinium in the uh, Batman sixty six era. No, it's just but it's just, just London, England. Just regular yeah. London. Did he ever go to the Londinium Batcave, or was that is that only from Adam? West? They might have said it, and it just went over my head. I hope they did. Uh, so yeah, this is did. a pretty great uh, standalone Batman story. Just uh, okay. some fun action and stuff. And there were a lot of Batman stories from the Black Label and other standalone stuff that I did not feel like worked. So the detective was a little okay. surprised. And last Batman thing I read was I read all the uh, Batman adventures this year. Oh, like for, based on the old The, uh, the show. animated series ran for 36 issues with some special yeah. issues and everything. You know, not every story is a is a home run, but there are some issues in here that really... Yeah that I wish had been animated. There's a great monster fight one where they get the werewolf from the Night of the Werewolf. They get uh, Tigra from the okay. Dr. Monroe episode, and they get Man oh, Bat, yeah. and, uh, and they're all like just duking it out while the Dr. That's Monroe cool. character is there, and uh, Catwoman. I don't know. It, that was a fun issue that I wish had an animated episode. Huh. And there's a lot of like... They, they really... 
the series did a lot of um, nice Talia and Batman moments. Oh, okay. Some that That's like cool. I didn't cry, but it definitely like I definitely left the page up a okay. lot longer than I normally would. A little just, misty, just to a look at it like poor Batman. <laughs> Have you read any? Let's see. I haven't read any of the other continuations. Like, there's a new Batman the Animated yeah. Series continuation, plus like Batman '89 and Superman '78. Mm-hmm. All that. Stuff. I haven't read any of those. Have you read any of that stuff? I did read Batman '89, which was bad. Oh no! I found it to be really bad. That's a bummer. But I found Superman '78 to be pretty good. Okay. So the idea that that comic would become the sequel to one of those Superman movies is pretty ridiculous. Okay. But the story itself is just kind of a vintage Superman story, the same way oh. that um, Superman for All Seasons or the uh, Superman oh, Secret okay, Origin. Okay. Like, yeah, that yeah. Kind of, like the. Uh, okay. Wilfredo Torres's art has a retro vibe to it. So it's just a fun I'm a, yeah. retro, like pre. I'm ready for that. Pre crisis Superman story that is also set in the movie universe. But that movie universe cool. wasn't, you know. They didn't care about franchise building the same way that it is now. So no, no, no. It's uh, it's different. But I had yeah. a good time with it. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, they're definitely on my list. I those those are ones that I want to get to. What are you most excited about? Like, what series are you most anticipating? I don't have one. I this is the year I finished a lot of stuff. I'm just ex- I'm excited about Superman War World and the oh, Son of okay. Kal-El stuff. That oh, that I really stuff. like. I can't wait to read. Yeah, yeah. I'm not really on anything new at the moment because I quit Marvel for that year. And yeah. DC, I'm definitely not up to date. Yeah. Okay. The Jonah Hex series. Oh, that's right. You love it. That uh, ended in 2011 with the new 52 that happened. So yeah. that series lands for 70 issues by Justin Gray and Jimmy Palmoidi. I've never said his name out loud. Yeah. Anyway, it's so good. It's such a good series. All 11 volumes are worth reading. It's great. Uh, this is the year I finished it because I was a couple of volumes in for a while and I was like, yeah, DC app, I'm doing it all. It's so good. I recommend it to everybody who likes dark, gritty Western tales. Yeah. Well, like with Superior Spider-Man, this is another one that you keep being like, read, read, read. So maybe this is the year. Yeah, I don't know, because this is violent. And Jonah Hex is pretty unredeemable a lot of times. Huh. Okay. So it's kind of like, uh, it's not even if the Punisher was in the West, because, you know, the Punisher still... I don't know. It's just, yeah, it's just yeah, great. Or whatever. He has like a code. I also okay. finished uh, Hellblazer this year. The original 300 oh, issue. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Hellblazer run ran for 300 issues. And uh, I feel like it went a couple of months after New 52. Oh, OK. Uh, started. But eventually, you know, they, it got canceled and they rebooted Constantine as a younger character set in the DC universe. OK. Listen, 300 issues of Hellblazer will. uh it's it's a ride. They're not all winners. Not every writer tells the best stuff. And it's really near the back end that you start noticing that. Um, anyway, uh, Peter Milligan is the last writer on Hellblazer. Okay. And he's on there for quite some time. And he just doesn't get it. It just doesn't uh, land. Mm-hmm. The ending is not yeah. a great ending. Yeah, I, his whole run is kind of once it's all done. I was once I was finished with Peter Milligan's run. I was like, this wasn't a good run, and <laughs> it wasn't a good ending. But yeah, there's plenty to read in the uh, series worth worth stuff. So uh, okay. I loved it. And as I was coming to the end, I was getting sad that I was going to be out of Hellblazer because you know anything else that comes after is still just going to be a different Constantine. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, it's a tough sell because he's not. I, I feel for them when they were doing the show and the movies and stuff, because he's not really a paranormal investigator. It's just sometimes he investigates the paranormal. He's not really a con oh, I man. See. Sometimes he's just conning. He's not really an exorcist. Sometimes he's just exercising. You know, it's just, yeah. he he's just a jerk who gets himself into trouble, who does lots of, I don't know. It's great, though. It's This is not one I recommend to you at all, though. Okay. It's dark, but it's also crude and gross a lot of times. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, very no. demony. Okay. No, no thanks. Yeah, but I okay. loved it. I'm sad it's done. It's collected in 26 trades now. Holy mackerel! Yeah. And those are the new trades. That's a lot. The, That's a fish. The new editions. Yeah. So that's big. Yeah, there you go. That's big. I don't stuff. know who my favorite right. run would be. I liked Mike Carey's a lot. I liked uh, Garth Ennis's run. Okay, uh, I've read so little Constantine. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. And also, the last thing I read was Supergirl: Woman of Tomorrow by Tom King. Oh, I read that. That. You like that? That's like on your list. Yeah. Was that uh, was that the black label? Was it? I don't I know. Have no idea. I don't, 
No, I don't think it was. It was I guess I like that story. I, I didn't really feel like it was much of a Supergirl story. That's that's what I was kind of looking for. Uh, I guess I felt there was enough Supergirl in it because her character felt true enough that okay. she was very right. uh, hopeful and positive and yeah, I'll willing give you that. to help out. That makes sense. It's just kind of, yeah, a trippy tour through uh, different space stuff as she's traveling through space and just kind of being like, Supergirl, if she was Conan the Barbarian in some ways. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's true. It's eight issues, and you know what? Even that's a little too long. Uh, one, or two, definitely. one or two issues. This was, But that's kind of Tom King's thing, too, to stretch concepts further than they can go. But this was probably the first it felt, Tom King. It felt overwritten to me. I don't know. Yeah, I appreciated that it was Tom King taking like a retro Golden Age character and not... Yeah putting them in a super toxic light and True. everything. Like I thought his Adam strange, the yeah. strange adventures or whatever it's called was awful. It's just kind of the thing he's been doing with the vision and, uh, Mr. Miracle and Adam strange and stuff. Like sometimes it works. And I feel like it worked with this because he was still telling like the stories he would tell, but Supergirl, you can't really do the stuff to her character that he had done to the other characters. Yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah. All right, Eric. Well, I would like to bring our time to a close with a rapid fire quarter bin selection. Are you oh, ready? Geez, Louise. Superboy number 99 from September 1962. The man who owned Superboy's costume. Oh, uh, I thought this was Superboy 1999. No. No such luck. No, no. Clark goes to check out Lana's new swimming pool and she suggests they swim. Well, guess what? She already went and got Clark's bathing suit, so he can just change right there at her house. But Clark is clever, and he knows that she's just trying to prove that he's got a Superboy costume underneath. So he changes into the very revealing blue uh, Speedo that she got for him. Then he takes his costume, puts it in a chlorine box, and throws it to the city dump, and he swims with Lana. Well, she gets out to check, and oh, no costume in there. He must have outsmarted her somehow. Anyway, they do the swim, and afterwards he goes to the dump. But oh no, a passing hobo has found the Superboy costume, and he can't reveal that it's his without telling everybody that he's Superboy. Are you staying with me? Yeah, I'm there. You're you're here. Yeah. Okay. He can't so tell the hobo he, that he's got the. Okay. Yeah. So the so the guy puts on the boots, and he's like, "I these shoes are never going to wear out because they're Superboy boots, baby." And Superboy decides, "Okay, I'm going to run home, and I'm going to get a costume made of regular cloth that my mom made, and I'm going to wear that." Then he goes underground and digs holes under the man's feet. So the guy thinks the boots are too heavy for him to walk in. And he throws the boots away and Superboy gets the boot back. All right. So now Superboy has to go save somebody from a fire and his cape and his costume get burned even more. And he finds the hobo selling the pants to a man driving by. So now this guy has the pants and Superboy has to go and make him think he's flying because of the pants so he's using a super breath to blow this guy up and he's floating around and the guy's like these pants are awful and he throws them away so superboy gets the pants back you with me we have the pants on the boots yes okay so now the shirt is being sold to this guy who's going to use it in a Real, robbery uh, trials of hercules here because he you're right because <laughs> he thinks that it's bulletproof right so the guy's going to go do this robbery superboy heats him up with his heat vision and the guy like this shirt's making me too hot throws it away superman's got the shirt back now we got everything but the cape but here's the deal the cape is not in the united states anymore superboy has searched everywhere he can't find it because it's been given to miguel a famous bullfighter from mexico so superboy goes to mexico and uses his superpowers to make the bullfighter look like an idiot uh, with the cape and the guy's like i don't want this anymore that's right throws the cape away boob superboy's got the costume back everything's fine right no, because Lana still thinks that he's Superboy and she catches him holding the costume, the temporary costume that his mom made. And he's like, oh, no, baby, look at this. This is just for the costume party tonight. And it's all ripped up. She still doesn't believe him. So she pulls it out of his hands and sets it on fire. But it burns. So she's going to have to find another way to prove that Superboy is Clark Kent. The end. What did you think? Do you have a good time reading this? Not really. Oh, what? No. So much happened. No. This <laughs> This one was just, it felt a little like, okay, yep, get the shirt, get the pants. It was one of those ones where who's like, I can't, like my oath as a superhero, I cannot just take this costume from this man. And so instead he just like ruins a bunch of people's day rather than just being honest. Yeah, yeah it didn't work for you me. You gotta love the old school uh, 
vibe of superheroes where they're just problems <laughs> for other yeah, people. They're just, they are. They're just about being yeah. a problem and yeah. inconveniencing others because that's true of their their stuff. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. He just wasted so much time and wasted. I mean, he made all these yeah. people look foolish. Yeah. Just to get his costume back, yeah. so no, not a superhero. Meanwhile, Bizarro turn. threw a school bus of children <laughs> into an open volcano or something. Right. Me, I'm helping school bus, and Superboy's like, I've got to make this homeless person think his feet are heavy. Ah, uh, all right. Well, that brings uh, that brings 2022 to a close with this amazing uh, Superboy story. Yeah, Eric, Eric, you're still podcasting over on 90s music. Got me like right. I am still podcasting over on 90s music. Got me like where we talk about 90s music. Uh, a song, an episode. Well, sometimes more. We talked about three James Bond episodes once. So I remember that. Yeah. That was a good time. Do you know what you're talking about next? Uh, yeah, we need at time of recording. We need to record our end of the year one where we're talking Millennium by Robbie Williams. Oh, OK. Yeah. And uh, for previously on X-Men, you guys are about to get into episodes that uh, very much confused me as a child. The Dark Phoenix? Yeah. <laughs> That's fun. I was watching it full speed, and I was like, what is this? Why are, Why is this happening? I don't yeah. understand. So maybe this time I will. Maybe I'll finally understand what's happening in the Dark Phoenix saga. You'll get it. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, you can find me uh, You can find me hanging out over on the Sindorian Life for 9021. Here we go. We're always having a good time. So fun. Well, here's to hopefully, <laughs> I hope for kind of a, because like, I finished so many good series, I'm hoping for... Like, I find some good series because I tried yeah. new series as well. I read, like, 50, the 50 issues of uh, Deathstroke that people thought were cool, and I thought it was nonsense. Yeah. So didn't like it. Yeah, having finished a bunch of stuff, I'm hoping 2023 finds me some uh, from new things. All the Vertigo yeah. titles are on the DC app now. That's cool. So, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll give The Invisibles another shot. I remember reading it and having no huh. idea what was happening. I have completely gotten away from uh, Batman titles. I hardly read any Batman or mm-hmm. uh, or Robin or Nightwing or that new The Batgirls plural mm-hmm. series. I haven't read that. All, all stuff I want to read. Batman's a thing where if we get a trade at the library, I check it out and read it. Yeah. Even, but even that, I'm still a little lost with some stuff that's happening. Yep. But uh, with the, I got the Marvel app again, so I'll read a big Ooh. I'll read a big chunk of this new era of X Men I'm hating, and then uh, <laughs> look for something else. I guess. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Well, happy new year, my friend. And to you. Okay. Bye. Bye.